back again, Patina Peeps, with another tutorial. Today we're going to do this assault fireball on this mod right here. Our supplies we're going to need Coleman's mustard, we've already opened, shook up. We need Sisal. This is a, it's a rope fiber. You can get it in the decorative section of a dollar store or um, like a florist. They use it for flower arrangements and such. We're also going to need our fume box, pen and paper to keep time. Our spray, of course. Mine is reef salt and ammonia, and I filter it before I put it in the bottle. A pair of tweezers. And let's get started. So the first thing you need to do is take the sasol, grab a section about, uh, about that, and you clip it off. And you start rolling it up in your hand. until you get a nice tight tiny little ball like so then we take our tweezers and we look around here to get the tightest section up front because that's what you want you don't want it to come unraveled when you're dabbing okay so we go ahead and we grab our mod where's our mustard i just put the mustard in the cap so much easier we do a little bit of dabby dab 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 Dab, dab, dab. Make sure you have a fairly decent amount on there. And we're going to start with this side. So with this particular pattern, I'm just going to do fire across the bottom and have some flames reaching up. So I'm going to start heavy. I'm going to go all the way around the mod. Okay, and yeah, that looks like. Now, if you look at right here, see these little fibers hanging off the top? Those are gonna be a pain, so we're gonna remove them. Go ahead and clip those bad boys off so they aren't an issue. Okay, back to a pretty good point here. So let's start picking a direction for our flame to start going. Oh, we have another hanger on. Can't have that. So this is the type of pattern that this is going to leave. Okay, and we'll touch up the pattern too. So you kind of just want to be random, you know? Let the chaos take over and let's see what type of patterns you get. Now the thickness is an issue. So you want the thickness to be fairly uniform. And once we get this applied, I think that's good. Let's take a look at what we've done here. Okay. Focus, Danielson. Focus. Okay. So, if you take a good look at the pattern there, you're going to see the high and low nature of when you dab it on. And that's what gives you those great layers of fire. Now, since this is a two-stage process, we're going to be layering fire on top of fire. So the first time around you want it to be kind of big like this because the flames that you put on next are going to be much smaller and they're going to fit nicely in there. So that's ready to go. I'll meet you outside for the spray. All right, now it's time to spray. Now you got to get a kind of mist and what you want to do is you just want to give it a nice spritz across. So you're giving a nice even layer. It's always good to do this outside because it stinks. Very stinky. All right, I'll meet you back. Now we're back inside with the fume box. I've been using aquarium filtration padding in there. 
It's really airy, works really nice. We're going to go ahead and put it in. So there it is inside the box. We're going to jot down our time with a Christmas tree pen because that's how I roll. Now it's a half an hour fume and I'll check back with you in 15 minutes when we rotate. Okay. Okay, we're back for our 15 minute checkup. And we have a, a cat helper and a little kid helper. So let's see what we got. It's starting to color up. I'm starting to get some blues. This was the upside, so let's go ahead and put that down. And there's still plenty of ammonia on it, so we don't need to spray it. Well, there's our 15 minute checkup. I will see, oh, I gotta mark it off the list. I will see you in another 15, and we'll do the rinse and reveal. Okay, time for our first reveal. Let's see what we got going on. Huh, didn't really want to show up too much on the back side, but I bet you we'll get a lot more color there once we do our second fume. So that's what we got. With all mixed patinas, you have to use water. I use a paintbrush to make sure I get everything off. And this was at a one hour. Hey, you Dabby dabby off. Now your first layer is going to not be so hot. It's going to be a lot of dark and a lot of browns and stuff like that. But that's where the magic of this patina happens is with the second funeral. I'll just give you a, a quick preliminary look and then I'll get all the all the mustard off. It actually takes a little bit to make sure you get it all off. I'm not going to bore you. Well, preliminarily, that's what we're looking at. So, I'll go ahead and finish cleaning it up and show you one. Okay, I am back. It's still wet. So, we'll have to wait until it dries to reapply and refume. But, oh, I'm upside down here. This is what we got from the first fume. I wish this stupid tablet would focus. There we go, kinda. So, this is the first layer of flames. I really like all the speckles. It kinda looks like a campfire when it throws off sparks. Now, see that dot right in the center frame there? That's actually a little bit of mustard I missed. Bummer deal. That's okay. I'll hit it with the paintbrush. Yep, there's layer one. I'll be back when it's dry, and we'll do layer two. Okay, and we are back. The mod is dry. And here's what we got going on so far. There it goes. So, this is after round one. And what we're going to do is essentially what we did before. We have our little Sasol ball here. We have our mustard. And we've also got a helper. Okay. So this time, what we need to do is we need to keep the fire inside the lines of the previous fire because the flames from this, the darker flames, will lighten up and they will show through. And it looks super cool. So, let's take a peek at what we got going on here, flame-wise. Okay. 
We know we gotta have it pretty thick along the bottom. Could you hold that mustard cap for me? Thank you. So we got it across the bottom. And we're just gonna sort of follow this flame. And we're just kind of laying the mustard right now because we'll be dabbing it on with the texture in a moment. I whistled when I spoke there. I was silly. Let's see. Yep, we need more up here. More here. Okay, then we just sort of follow the, the same texture and lines as before. I mean, it's pretty hard to mess up. And when we do the fume this time, it will actually layer over the top of some of the flames that we didn't add more mustard to, so it'll give it a nice layered look. I think that we got it. So the next step is to spray it exactly how we did last time, which I will spare you guys and my lovely daughter the pain of having to film. So, I will go spray this, put it back in the box, and be right back. Okay, we're back. It is sprayed. It is in the fume box. Let me go ahead and write down the time for the second fume. And let's have a peek. There it is, nice and started. I put the side that didn't have a super lot of blue face down for the first beam. And there we have it. I'll come back in 15, we'll take a peek and rotate. Okay, back again, 15 minutes into our second fume. Let's take a peek of what we got going on. It looks pretty good. I don't think it needs a spray across the body, but we'll just make it nice and fumey. No, it's pretty dry. It does have to be sprayed. Okay, looks good. We'll be back in another 15, and we'll take a he get our results. I'm not going to film the second reveal because, frankly, it was a pain in the ass. But it's exactly the same procedure. So, back in 50. Okay, we are back again. And our time is up. Let's see what we got. Not too shabby. Now since we're doing such short fumes, you're not going to get a super lot of blue. But what you can do is you can uh, patina your mod first and do this on top of a fully blue patina. It just doesn't give as good a color, so, to, in my experience. So, that's what we got. I'll go rinse it and I'll be back. Okay, we have a rinsed mod. Let's take a look at the patina. This hasn't dried out yet. But you can see the layers of fire. For example, if you look in the center of the frame, you can see the flame shapes from underneath showing through. Now last night I did a mod similar to this and I copied that 
procedure exactly. It did give us slightly darker flames, but when you look at it under daylight, it looks fantastic. So, there you have it. It's just got to dry and go to the paint box for clear coat. So, I hope you enjoyed watching, and this will is the conclusion of the Sisal Fireball tutorial. Thanks again.